This week on Business Today, we've got Andrew Ford as our special guest. We've got Peter McLernan, Helia Singh, so much more. We've got golfing pro himself, Mr. Peter Hopkins, giving a golfing tip. We're covering everything from tips of how to start a successful business, how to grow your business, get it to the next level, and mindset, and so much more. Hi, welcome to Business Today. We are out there interviewing successful business owners and sharing their success strategies with you. It is an exciting project, Gerard. It is. We, you know, we always say that uh, clever people learn from their mistakes, but geniuses learn from other people's mistakes. And uh, I don't think there's one successful business owner will say I had not made a mistake. Let's learn from other people. <laughs> exactly. And that's what we really want to do. Um, our first guest, our very special guest is Mr. Mr. Peter McLernan, self-made millionaire himself. And he really gets to the grassroots. In this, in this interview, he was actually talking to us about what some of the tools he uses to guarantee a startup business can be successful. I think it's important to listen to these uh, interviews to see what little golden nugget you can take and implement in your business today. That's the 1% change that we want. Absolutely. Let's see what Peter had to say. First thing I'll do is um, just check to see whether or not I've got a business plan. So, you know, um, what, what type of business is it? Uh, what's the competition? You know, what kind of financing is going to be required? And is there a budget in place? So, so really, you're just thinking maybe five years ahead to say, well, this is this is how it's going to un unfold over five years. This is my starting point. You know, so the starting point would be, you know, looking for the correct type of premises, the right location, that type of thing, um, local government, you know, regulations, all that kind of stuff. You know, and then looking at your competition to see uh, part of that location would be competition. So, you want. You may or may not want to be right next door to your competition. So that's a you know, kind of a question, really. Um, sometimes you want to be in the competition because it attracts the crowd. And if you stand out, then the crowd's already there. You've just got to attract them from, away from your competition. So by well, being different or whatever. Yeah. But, well, standing out can be just as, you know, as um, different as providing better service, you know, or better variety of product, or better quality product, or better pricing, you know. Pricing is not always the uh, you know, main point because, you know, um, it only goes a certain distance. So it's really, I'd say in Australia, most, I, I sell the business. So my bottom line is not, is, is value for money. So business people are looking for value for money. So, so I may not be the cheapest, but for that level of quality, I'll be the cheapest, you know. So I'm not trying to sell, I'm not trying to, as I say, be the cheapest in Australia, but what I want to do is provide the best value for money, you know. Um, in my particular circumstance, what I do is um, I don't specialise. So I cover the full range of business products, which is unusual or unique, you know. So, um, you know, we cover everything really. So office furniture, fit outs, shelving, racking, shop fittings, business machines, um, everything you could need for business. So that sets us apart in some ways. All of our competitors are pretty much specialised. Yeah, and I think, you know, there's, there's two sides of that story, you know. Um, we might be niche just because we supply everything, you know. <laughs> it's the other end of, you know, the same scale. So, so I see people's point that specialising enables certain advantages, you know. Um, but uh, we have all of those advantages under one roof. So, you know, we've got five niches. <laughs> so, as I say, you know, it's, it's um, in our own business model, we're uh, looking to be uh, something like, um, well, we call ourselves home base for business. So we're like using the home base model. So, and the IKEA model and a few others, so, as they say, <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun, but we're taking a little bit from some successful, other successful businesses. So, for example, with Homebase, um, they cater fully to the home building industry. So if you're renovating or building a new house or whatever, you go to, you go to Homebase. 
and they only have one um, centre in every capital city, which is what our model runs on as well. So what we are is home base for business. So we cover the full range of um, business products. So if you're expanding a business, building a new business, starting a new business, opening a new branch, you come and see us and everything's under one roof. It's all here. You know? um, then IKEA, IKEA, um, you know, there's lots of furniture stores and people can go to a variety of furniture stores. But a lot of people go to IKEA because it's one big centre. And when you arrive there, you know you're going to see the whole everything you'd see in any of those other stores under the one roof. So we're not trying to be an office works, for example, with a store on every corner. We want a single large, what we call a, um, we don't call it a showroom, we call it a product selection center um, that attracts business people from all over the metropolitan area because when, when they get here, they know they can see that any product that they want for their business is gonna be available. Yeah, yeah as I say, I, I, you know, there's nothing much new under the sun. Most of it's been done before. So you can look at you know, other people's successes and their models, and you don't have to use the whole model. It may not suit you, but you can use parts of models and build your own model. <laughs> but your own model is then built from things that have, you know have been successful in the past. You know, So yeah, it, as I say, ours is built on probably three successful models. You know. Well, I think uh, part of the part of the philosophy is things come down to your own basic beliefs. I suppose you know if you're running a business and you're in a position where you can control what happens with the business. So um, probably one of my basic beliefs is that you know we're here to uh, we're here to learn everything we can and therefore develop ourselves. But then the second part of that equation is that then you have a responsibility to teach others. You know? So so. Um, Within our own business, we try to um, bring our own employees up through the ranks so that, you know, um, teaching them basically what we've learnt, you know, so that they become better at what they're doing. Um, also then that, that kind of spreads out to, if I know something about business, you know, if I've learnt through the ups and downs, then I've got a responsibility maybe to, you know, um, help other business people, you know, not just by products, but also by advice and so on, you know. Extremely important, yeah. This is one of the big clues, really, is the cash flow. So cash flow is king, they say, and that's definitely the, definitely the case. Um, so, you know, personally, I, I run, I've got my own kind of accounting system. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I've always had an internal, well-qualified bookkeeper or accountant, anyway, full-time. I think that's um, very important, you know. And then an external accountant for taxation purposes. So we do everything internally as much as possible. We have our own internal IT person and marketing person. So we're not reliant on, on um, waiting in a queue with um, expensive external advisors. We try and do everything internally. You know, makes makes the running of the business a little bit more expensive, but you get things done quicker and you get them done. If we want to upgrade our website, for example, add a new product, it's done that day. You know, we don't have to wait a week for anything. I'll we'll get it done outside. Um, overall, when you're paying fairly high fees for consultants, there's not much difference between that and employing somebody. You know, finding the right people is a bit of a clue there as well. Um, you don't obviously, you know, uh, you employ knowledgeable people in each area, accountants and so on, bookkeepers and so on. But you have to know and understand, particularly the cash flow for the business, particularly if you're in a business like mine, which is retail. So. Um, I, I run a sheet that I update it daily, so it's like a live um, bank account. So, so every morning, so it's it's forecast six months ahead. <laughs> so, so it's an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. It's only three columns wide, you know. So, the first column is the date. Second column is the whatever the description of the transaction, and the third column is the dollar value. Right? So, every week, so it's broken up into weeks. So. I've got a forecast income that I expect based on history, you know, recent, most recent history, what I expect the turnover is going to be each week, you know, or income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you start with what you start with really is the bank account balance every morning. So, <laughs> so this is live. You know, every morning. Every morning. Yeah. So you check the bank account and you put the new bank account balance in the top. So that's your starting point each day for, for the rest of the week. So, um, you know, it starts. Um, Monday to Monday to Sunday, basically. We open on Saturdays, you know. Um, you start with the bank account, whatever it is, say, um, Monday morning. 
um, and then for that week you've got all of the expenses that are either known or estimated. So for example, you know what the rent is. So the rent will be in there as a, as a correct figure, whatever week it's due, you know, of the month, you know. Wages will be in there because wages are a, 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 a number that you can estimate unless you're having casuals and so on, you can get pretty close to it. Um, what might be a variable is that might be the week where you pay the electricity. So that's a variable. But you can estimate based on history what you think that might be. So some of the figures in there for the week, all the outgoings are in there for that particular week. Anything must be paid that week. And so you have a positive starting figure, which is bank, bank balance. Then you have all negatives, you know, rent, wages, <laughs> electricity, water, IT, you know, blah, 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 blah. Advertising and marketing. And then you get to a, another line, which is your estimated income for the week. So now you've got your bank account, your outgoings, your estimated income, and then a new balance for your bank account starting the next Monday morning, right? <laughs> So on you go week after week. Now you get some extraordinary um, expenses that you need to enter when they arrive. You know, you get a bill that you've got to pay in 14 days. It's an extraordinary bill, but you put it in 14 days time to be paid. So really you're forecasting live forward. You know, you can see in six months time what your bank balance might be if everything goes, you know, close to what's anticipated. Yeah. And I, do, I upkeep that every morning, so yeah. Mm. Well, that was Peter McLennan. What a great segment from him. I really like some of his uh, attitudes he has, but I particularly like his strategy for measuring numbers and how he takes that as a real core uh, to his success. Well, we always say you need to know your numbers. Mm. For me, it was all about his mindset. I really loved the way um, he explained um, his mindset. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe during the week we had Helia singing, and she's a self-made millionaire, and you managed to ask her a little bit about mindset. Well, when she we started talking about mindset, I thought this is a great opportunity to maybe to videotape this, <laughs> and uh, we just got into the, the studio and uh, videoed her. Today I'm going to talk about mindset and how this has affected our wealth creation journey. But before that, I want to tell you a story. If you were with me seven years ago, I was in Melbourne in a winter gloomy day and I was with my five-year-old daughter and we were just baking a cake. So for some reason she had to stay home and you know I had to be a mom and help her to bake. What happened was because she loves to chat and talk and suddenly she asked me and said to me that mom I can't wait for the summer to start so I can go to beach and then she said to me when was the first time you went to beach, mom? Because she knew the country that I lived and I was born. So the city was very far away from beach. And just for a second, I thought, I said, oh, I was a teenager when that happened. And she was surprised and she said, you must have been so excited the first time you went to see a beach and you must have just run to the water and you'd gone crazy. And that just brought so many memories back. And I thought about it and I said, well, actually not, because I was a teenager and in my country of origin, because of the Islamic government, as a girl, I wasn't allowed to go in the water. So even when I went to beach, even though I was excited, I was standing right beside the beach in Caspian Sea, it was beautiful, but I couldn't go in the water just because I was a girl. And that's why I always didn't like being a girl, because it just felt that it was unfair that boys can have fun, but girls couldn't have fun. When I said that, my daughter said something to me that really changed my life. She said to me, that's sad, mom. That meant you never loved yourself. Those words hit the chord with me. I finally realized what is blocking my success, what is happening to me. And that was because I didn't love myself enough. And that was my mindset. I thought because who I was, where I was born, that's life and that was unfair, way unfair. And it's just only after realization and then working on myself to fall in love with me again and uh, just giving myself nurture and finally realizing who I want to be, what I want to do, what is the reason behind my goal settings. These were my mindset and that really helped me to break that ceiling glass and really skyrocket my success and my wealth. So if you want to know more about mindset, please watch my YouTube channel, which is called Wealth Coaching with Helia Singh. Our first episode is dedicated to mindset. 
and I had a great interview with a very good expert in that internationally known, and she's going to share with you what is the text about mindset and how it's affecting our wealth creation. Because mindset is just a state of mind, whether you see yourself as a rich person or poor or you are lucky or unlucky or whatever you see yourself and you tell yourself, that's all your mindset and you can just change it like that. The epiphany can happen right at any moment to anyone. All you need to do is just sit there, relax and watch the episode. Welcome to another golf tip. Brought to you by Top Tracer, your personal golf coach, helping you hit it straight down the middle. Welcome to this week's golf tip, brought to you by Top Tracer. This week we're going to talk about consistency. So the main important things for getting consistency in your golf swing and your golf ball flight is making sure that you have the correct grip, stance and posture. So what we want to do is just have a simple hold of the golf club. So we bring our hands from our sides, just bring them in together, just take hold of the golf club. Our options are in our grip, uh, overlap, 10 fingers on there, interlock. There's plenty of options. None of them are incorrect or have to do. From there, we want to make sure that we get our <coughs> posture where we push our backside out a little bit, let our arms just fall down and from here. And then from there, it's just a matter of swinging back over my right shoulder, through over my left shoulder. And then from there, we should be able to get the consistency to get the ball going straight down the middle. We'll be able to do this and I'll show you by hitting a few shots on Top Tracer, how we can use Top Tracer to get and prove that consistency. So let me hit three shots and be able to show you how Top Tracer can be your own personal coach in getting that consistency into your golf swing. So here we go, nice posture, set up, swing back, swing through and finish balanced. From there we'll be able to get that consistency. The Top Tracer will show us what's happening on each of those shots. And you can see the importance of finish balanced and keeping the rhythm and timing in your swing to get that consistency. Posture, grip, backswing, and through. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tip and I look forward to seeing you on Top Tracer on the range here at Whaleback Golf Course in the near future. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a difference there when we popped out to Whaleback Golf Course and caught up with Peter Hopkins. I really enjoyed the bit of a golf tip he gave in that. But before that was Hilia Singh and you got her with Mindset. It Mindset to me is it's so important. Uh, we talk about it a lot, yeah. uh, especially having a, a poor mindset or a rich mindset. Uh, where you know when you have a rich mindset, you always look for those golden nuggets. When you have a poor mindset, you always look for things that can go wrong. Mm, so true. It's interesting because we hear some people, uh, even on that mindset, talk about Facebook, the good things about Facebook and the bad things about Facebook. Uh, but we're fortunate that. Uh, Ivor Kearney popped in, he was up in the studio lounge and I think, and we turned the cameras on him. <laughs> I, I think the people realise when they come and visit us and there's an interesting topic, the cameras get switched on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at Ivor, he's from Digiflex, he is a Facebook expert and I think on this one he gives some really great advice talking about Facebook for business. What I'd like to talk to you today is a few business tips with your Facebook page. One being the importance of your image. Now, a lot of companies have their logo as, they, as in that section. I would prefer if you have your personal picture. If you're a business like an accountancy firm or a lawyer's firm or delivering a high quality service, you should probably get a professional headshot with a suit and tie at least. If you're more in the gym environment or you're selling supplements or maybe you have a business where it's more of a personal one-on-one, -on -one, potentially tone your dress down slightly. 
but it's always better to have that high quality image there that gives them the line of trust. So when they come actually see you, they know who you are. You, you don't want to have a professional service with offering a high ticket um, service along with you in a t-shirt on the beach. It just doesn't work out. People want to see your professional, they will research you, no matter what you think they do. They will pull up your name, they will check you out, social proof. That goes to your standard images within your Facebook page. We all love those one nights out and another party with a ties around your head and so on. Strip out all the images that is not relevant to your business and keep it business specific. Take social proof with clients. If you can, add them in. Anything relevant to your avatar, put that on your page. Anything else, keep it out and also keep your personal profile clean because people will go to your business profile. Then they'll jump over to your personal profile. And if one minute you're in a suit and tie and the next minute you're on a, on a, a beach in, in, in Bali with 25,000 people having a party, it's probably not going to convert very well. The other thing is the about section of your page. And it's very important that you go through that section. If you don't know where it is, it's on the left hand side on your page, about two thirds of the way down. Go in there, update all your links to your websites. If you've got LinkedIn, make sure it all links across to, to, to your other pages, your other forums, test it out. Because people will, like I said, go and search those forums. They will figure out where you are because sometimes even though you've got a business Facebook page, the majority of your people are on LinkedIn. They will be on LinkedIn. They will go from LinkedIn back to Facebook. So it all needs to be nice and clean and driven towards your avatar. Also within your about section, make it about how you're going to help the people. What you can give them, some results, some testimonials if you can, or what you can do for them. It's great saying how good you are and all your qualifications and what you've done, but unless you can give them some social proof on how you can help them better their business, probably not going to convert to a lead. That whole about section is very important. Your mobile number needs to be in there. Like I said, your email address, your website, your LinkedIn details, everything that is about you that gives them an opportunity to go to the next level to figure out that you are a fit for them. So that is, your, that is a little tip for you. Go in there tonight, spend an hour, put new, some new images out, remove some of the old images, put them somewhere else, they're great to have. And I'll see you soon. Hi and welcome back. Well, we hope you enjoyed. Uh, we're having a bit of a giggle because poor old Eyeball came into, he was up in the lounge, wasn't he? And he started talking about Facebook and of course, well, anyone that knows us, we couldn't resist <laughs> we him at the desk and turn the camera right on him. He did brilliantly, I thought. I thought he'd give some great advice there. The thing with Facebook, uh, things change all the time. So it's really mm. important to keep up to date to what you can and what you can't. Mm. Uh, when you go to Facebook jail, you know, that's yeah, of I know. <laughs> He's certainly a guy getting worth it, getting in touch with. Talking about keeping up skilled, I caught up with Franco Prio. He, he popped in, a, another victim. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was downstairs in, in our lounge downstairs, and he started talking about how he got into training and how important training has been for sustaining his business and to grow his business. We know ourselves that we have to keep on training. We have mm. to keep on listening. Uh, it's, it's continuous. Once you start with this process of coaching, you never stop. No, and I suppose there's a lot of business owners that sometimes wonder about the value of training. And that's why we turn the cameras on to Franco. I think he's definitely worth listening to this little interview we had with him. Back. Look, um, we're talking to Franco from a Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning, probably one of the most successful carpet cleaning companies here in Western Australia. And you run the Carpet Cleaning Association, another gentleman there as well. Oh, it's not, not just me, there's actually a committee of uh, six different people. I've taken a bit of a step back. I'm just their training and technical officer now. Oh. So we've got uh, Graham yep. uh, from Expert Carpet Cleaning, who's the president. Yep. And we have Kim, who is our uh, Basically, uh, our secretary, who is the one who co-founded with me as well, mm. um, who uh, he's, uh, he's now taken the, uh, that, that role there. And then obviously we've got the treasurers and all the other positions we need mm. for a general committee. So well, You were one of the people that originally set it up, weren't you? Came Absolutely. Up, you yeah. came up with the concept. Yeah. Why? Someone would say, why? Frankly, you're a carpet cleaner. Why are you making something that helps other people be successful? Because it was such a cowboy industry. And that was a problem. There was no professionalism. Now, when I started, it was a case of, you just grab a machine, off you go, no training, no nothing, no mm. knowledge. I had zero knowledge. 
Now, I remember I was, I was in the industry for six years and I just got to the point where I was like, do I want to be doing this? I'm, I'm just feeling, you know, like a, a, a knuckle dragger because I had, I couldn't really, there was no internet back in those days, mind you, and there was no training. And then all of a yeah. sudden, this training company popped up and they were coming to Perth. So I was at the point, I was at that tipping point of either getting out of the industry and doing something else altogether or professionalising somehow. So I went to the training program and went, oh my God, what have I been doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, after that, it was, uh, like, you know, I started under to understand what I was doing and, and realise why things were either not going right or going particularly right in, in different situations. So knowledge is power. That's the biggest and, and, and uh, most foremost thing. It's, it's interesting because they talk to a lot of business people. When you read a lot of business books and they'll tell you you've got to get your values, you've got to get your purpose, you've got to get these systems and processes. But not many of them really talk about a, a base fundamental and it's your continual training. And, yep. and, it's, and you set this uh, system up, but even though you say you've stepped back from the actual running of the organisation, this training is still at your core, it's still at your Absolutely, heart. absolutely. You know, and, and as I said, it's a, I really did realise that education was the core of a good business. And it doesn't matter which part of the business you're looking at, you need to learn. You know, mm. I've been in, years, in, in, in business for 32 years. Do I know everything? I don't know that much. Mm. You know, so I'm going through another learning process to try and advance my business as well because I just got to a, a point where I felt it stagnated. It's like, I need to do more. So let's go back, let's hit the books, and let's start looking at how I can learn to run my business more effectively. I've got the knowledge up and continue training mm. uh, on the technical side of my business, but I still need to know how to make the best of the business itself as well. So when people are set, if someone's setting into business today, it doesn't matter if it's carpeting or whatever, is your recommendation is to have a look at different bits and then have some form of mental attitude that I must keep continuing up skilling in, in these Oh, years. absolutely. How do you manage it in amongst running a busy business though? You find time, you make time, prioritise. You, know, you, you, you set time aside. I mean, for me, um, today's a Monday and yep. this is the day I actually don't go on the road. Mm. I am basically in my office and looking at all sorts of different bits and pieces, trying to better the, the business itself. The educational side of the things, well, hey, there's reading materials you can read in your own spare time. Okay, so that can be any day of the week. But I set aside a week, to, a day a week to work on my business rather than being in it all the time, which mm. makes it too difficult because you're, yeah, you're trying to satisfy a customer's needs rather than your own. Yeah, it's interesting. Someone, it, what would you say to someone that challenge that and say, "Well, Franco, I can't take a day off because you know then I'm not earning any money." If you want to advance, to get further, you've got to take or make some sort of commitment and a sacrifice somewhere. Okay, now I could still be working every single Monday like I used to do, and then all that's happening is that I'm staying at that level. I can't progress any further. Okay, so how can I get to the point where I can get a tipping point to put another person on? Well, I've got to learn new things. Okay, so I mean for, for carp cleaning in particular, to put another person on is actually a major, major step. Mm. Um, in, in the actual cost, um, I was just comparing cost with a, a person who did uh, started up cleaning a few, three years ago. Now, they paid $3,000 for all their gear to set up a cleaning business. Okay, yep. as, as just as a, as a basics. For me, as an absolute basics, and this is not even including a vehicle, it's $15,000 just to get the basics. And you need a vehicle. Yeah, okay, now my vehicle, I've got three of them, mm. uh, and they range between 90,000 to 150,000 to put on the road. Mm. Okay, so it's a fairly big impulse. It's not money you can just pull out of the hat. No. Okay, so to put someone else on in carpet cleaning terms and to go through the training and all the rest of it, it takes some form of money, whether it be a loan or a cash. You know, it's, it's an expensive proposition, so it's a big step. So I really need to increase my business quite dramatically to be able to afford to put the second person or third person on. One thing I'm picking up there, Franco, you actually know your numbers. I've seen a, a few business people that go to expand, and first thing you say, well, why do you want to? 
But I suppose the second question is, what is your cash position to expand? And mm -hmm. it sounds to me like you're really, you're looking at expanding, but you're taking that step of, okay, what, you seem to know your numbers of what it will cost you to expand and then be able to reverse well, engineer? Yeah, it's a reverse engineer. That's the exact right terrain for me. You've got to look through where you want to be and come back from that point and work out mm. the steps along the way of how you're going to get there. Because mm. without knowing that, you can't set yourself any sort of, uh, points of reference or goals, many goals if you want to, <coughs> if you want to put it that way. You've got to know how to get there rather than what the final destination is. I mean, I, I can tell you, well, you know, I'm going to drive to Sydney. I could end up in Darwin if I don't know <laughs> the way that it goes. I've got to have some sort of roadmap to get there. Yeah, and what vehicle and what fuel and... Yeah, okay, I ain't going to walk there. <laughs> <laughs> not, not from Perth in Western Australia. No, 5,000 k's. I think I'd wear one or two pair of shoes out. Do you think this how, I mean, because you've got car, I mean, you, you've got three vehicles, you've got car. Is this how you've always done your business? You've looked at the strategy and then analysed the risks of that strategy to help you formulate a, a, a plan? Well, what it is, is that if, the first and foremost thing was to, like you said, going back to, to knowing your numbers, mm. okay, to, to see if there is room to be able to do what you want to do or scope within within what you're doing. And if you can't, well, then you've got to work a way around to get to that system. Yes. So yeah, knowing the numbers that is the biggest thing straight up to understand your, your, your books and how they're working for and against you. Mm. Okay, because uh, let's, let's face it, you know, being in business can be a rather expensive proposition. <laughs> can, can for Yes, yeah, just to run your day to daily. Yeah, it's not and, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. That, you know, and, and especially when people who are in trade situations Mm. You know, a lot of them are buying themselves a job, not a business. You know, they're really surviving you know, hand to mouth and not thinking about the fact that, well, you know, in five years' time, I need, might need to replace that machinery or that, that vehicle or, you know, mm. we've got to do other bits and pieces along the way. Things change. And replace ourselves. We kind of wear out. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, do. don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> But I suppose that it, it is that looking. I suppose when someone looks and, and trades people, we do wear out. I mean, I'm a, I'm a trader in your and your bones and you're kneeling down and you're doing physical activity. But I suppose people look and then say, so what motivates? I mean, look at a business owner like yourself who's already successful. What's motivating you to even consider? the next level. So it's people trying to get inside your head and go, I want to grow, I wonder why you want to Look, I made it. a conscious decision for a lot of years to just sit back and be on my own, doing my own thing in my own time. But at the end of the day, what does that give me? You know, when I come to the end of my working career, I have some equipment to sell off. I don't have anything else. There's no goodwill involved. Mm. Okay, goodwill means nothing in our industry. Yeah. So it's either have a you know, some equipment to sell or have a business to sell that I could actually get something back from that yep. I've put into over the years. Mm. So it's also a, really a, a case about trying to, to work smarter, not harder, okay? Once again, I've got another 10 years to go before I, I've, I've got to retire. <laughs> yep, and so 10 years, it's gonna hurt. To do that on my own, it's gonna really hurt. So that's why I thought, well, mm. you know, bring someone else into the business as well. And once I took that step and I took a bit of pushing from someone else to do it, because I you know, had someone that was uh, coaching me in the background and giving me a bit of advice, and um, he said, you can do it, you can do it, you know, we can see you can do it. Mm. And I thought, oh, and that is what I want it to be, but then, you know, it's, things do change. And I finally made the jump, and it's like, why didn't I do this before? Okay, and that's been part of the learning thing. Yeah. That I learned that I, I <laughs> could do a lot better and still I've got massive room for improvement. Don't get me wrong. The, the interesting thing is two things there that I pick up on. One is having that mentorship and that coaching you've got in the background. Some, somebody who actually cares about you and supports you. I think that's really important. But one thing I did pick up when you were just talking then, it was when you looked at the exit strategy, yep. when you asked yourself that What's question. at the end of it? Yeah. Yeah, that's a powerful question for someone to ask themselves. Yeah, yeah, because um, like I said, I want to make sure that if I'd, I've put how many years into this, it's 32 years so far this year, yes. okay? And, and I'd like to have something to show for that. You know, there's uh, even just the, the, the legacy, if you want to, my, my own pride to yeah. say, well, look, this is what I've managed to achieve rather than just fade away into the background. You know, I, I, I guess I've, you know, through the Carpet Cleaning Association, I've left a bit of a mark there. But that's not just me. This is something that would be intrins intrinsically personal to me and, and what I've managed to do for, for mm. myself. So I take a bit of pride in myself and 
yeah, that's that's uh, that's 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 the ultimate goal, I guess, and the uh, the, the motivation for it. The other thing I've picked out of conscious your time, Franco, is that you've asked that really powerful question, but you made a comment and you said when you made the leap, you wished you'd done it earlier. Yeah. Does that mean you'd wish you'd asked the question? Early, you think you'd had you had someone right at the very beginning. Would you would you advise people? Hey, ask this question early as possible. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. If you're going for business yourself, you've got to question why you're going into business. You know? Yeah, and and to have some sort of real game plan. I mean, I've seen so many people come and go because they've not got any plan whatsoever. Um, I had one guy that uh, did some training with me about a year ago, and he's just pulled out of the industry two, three weeks ago. Sold all, all his gear off, and he's, he's now gone. He couldn't survive. He didn't have the right mentality to be in business, unfortunately. And that's really a shame. He was a lovely guy. Yep. You know, he really wanted to do well. He really wanted mm. to do right. But he'd stuck his mind into this, this, this slot, which was completely unsuitable and couldn't l allow him to expand. Right. And he didn't seem to be able to, to, to learn from you know, someone as myself and several other people trying to guide him along the way because he had this preconceived notion about pricing in his particular case yeah. that you know he, was, he saw all these other people at, at, a, at a ridiculous cheap price and because he was starting out well I've got to match them no you don't no you don't, no, you don't. you're only as good or you're gonna, gonna get as much as you think you're worth it's if you think you're worth nothing you'll get nothing if you think you're worth something you'll get what you think you're worth I think that's a great piece of advice Frank Oprio, fresh air carpet cleaning. Thank you so much. No worries, thank you, Michael. Well, there we are, Frank Oprio. What really impressed me about Frank Oprio is honesty there for one, when he said he almost went out and, and quit his business until he discovered training and giving new vigoration. And you know, he went out there and helped co-found the Carpet Cleaning Association. But his attitude to training and continual training was really impressive. But it's good for us to hear as well, we are doing the training all the time, that it's mm. definitely having an effect on the person and on the business. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Hey, if you want to ask any of our guests so far any questions, all their email details uh, down below, so, or up above, wherever they are, whichever platform you're watching <laughs> this on, because we are on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Instagram, Instagram. TV. Uh, so yeah, be feel to send them their questions. They, they'd love to answer anything you want to know. Now, coming up next, it's Andrew Ford from a Ford and Doonan fame right here in Western Australia. Well, when I've met Andrew the first time, I was astonished in how he just, you ask him a question and the information was just there. I was so impressed and I, I kept contact with Andrew for, for mm. a long time now and I'm just still amazed every time I speak to him, the information that he gives. I was really lucky for him to come in and actually get to do a one-on-one -on -one interview. And this is part one. It got so good, we actually... <laughs> <laughs> we time, so, we split. so part two is next week. This is part one. We asked him about growing a business. And oh my goodness, some of the information he came out with. Yeah. Like I said, you can learn. Every time you speak to Andrew, you'll learn something. So Ford and Doonan, just so you know, been in business 35 years, continuing to grow, continuing to expand. Andrew and Kyle really do know their stuff. And keep on innovating. Lots of people ask us about growing their business. Well, one guy who knows how to grow a business, it's Andrew Ford. How are you, Andrew? Well, Michael. <laughs> but in your consultant's capacity, and I really appreciate you coming in, is you actually help people grow, but you have a system you take them through, and sometimes people get a little bit surprised about where you actually start. That's right, there's some key questions I like to ascertain just to really make sure they're on the right track on, mm. on the growth. So one of the key points and the first point I normally ask is, why do you want to grow? <laughs> because, uh, and that seems like a logical question that would already have an answer, but when you actually ask it, it does stump a few people. And there's, there's a couple of reasons, obviously, there's lots of different reasons, personal motivators. Mm. Largely, I think the uh, common one would be money that we want to make more money, and that's fine too. Yep. Um, it's definitely a driver. Um, also the challenge, and that's personally been a lot of uh, the appeal to me of business growth, is that challenge that we've sort of reached one level of, of a business. How do we take it to the next? And just because people say, 
almost like, oh, you've really reached large enough, you should stop now. It's like, no, just, you told me that alone <laughs> makes me want to grow more. So it can be the challenge. And let's be honest, sometimes it's the ego too for many people too. Mm. They want their name up in more marketing or they want to be the biggest in their industry sector. And that yeah. can be another driver. I have found with a lot of business people, it is a challenge. I know I was listening to a talk, you were giving one time and someone asked you, and you used to play squash. So yeah. Mr. Competitive anyway. <laughs> yeah, a bit like that, yeah. And, yeah. and you were going, and people were going, what, you know, Ford and Doonan, obviously everyone knows you for Ford and Doonan, but you've got a gymnasium as well. Yeah. But, and people are saying, why are you still, what's driving you? Got, you've still got to work, you still turn yeah. up, you're still looking for new opportunities. Where do you think that competitive drive? Do you think business people are very similar? They've all got a competitive drive? I think they do, Michael. It's certainly, um, you, you sum me up very well. I'm a very competitive person, very, very young age through sport. And I do like to be the, the top of the game. And if, mm. yeah, that challenge is a big part of it for me. And that competitiveness and the challenge sort of come hand in hand to me. But um, I think you'd find most business people who have taken their business to the next level would have mm. that competitive streak in them. So when you ask them the why question, and I can imagine a few of us would be, oh man, <laughs> when you're very fair for you kind of go, oh, hold on, I thought yeah. it was obvious. Yeah. It, you start making them write things down and exploring it and the reason, it's like, oh, I'm competitive, well, why are you competitive and, and try and dig a bit deeper? I do, and I've got a worksheet. If we do, for, one of the ways I like to, with a new client, is do like a two hour sort of SWAT type strategic workshop on a whiteboard and preempting that meeting, I'll send out like, I think 16 questions in there diving into it. So A, it gives me a snapshot of the state of the business before I have to ask the same questions in that strategy session. But it also articulates exactly what you said, is one of the first questions is why do you want to grow? Yeah. Uh, and just see what their answer is. And <laughs> so I give them some leader answers so they know where I'm coming from. And yeah. just to see that, because once you ascertain that, it makes it a lot easier to sort of tailor the plan or the suggestion on how they could grow. Wow, do, do you find that question itself, I do want to move on because you've got some great information, that can be confronting sometimes when you ask it? Yes, it can. Yes, it really makes people stop and think. And so there's no right or wrong answer, and we've all got our own personal motivators and drivers, yeah. so there's not a right answer to there. But so once they've convinced themselves, they've got an answer why they want to, where do you, where, where's the next thing you start taking them through, Andrew? Yeah, the next one, well, just four key points. So hmm. what's in place for growth? Like saying I want to grow my business is all very easy. It's just lip service, you know? Sounds good, doesn't it? does it? sound good. <laughs> and so it's what have you got in place? So a lot of people just think, okay, I'm going to put a little bit more marketing and that, that'll be all I need. But as we know, there's a lot more to it than that. Hmm. So, the, you know, the, the things like the cash reserves, the financial state of the business, Normally growth costs money, very few growth stories I've ever come across where they've just grown organically with no additional need or pressure on the cash reserve. So the first thing is to find out their financial position and, and how much cash do they have or where's the money going to come from. And, you, and, and what I like about you, because you've actually been there, done it, you actually walk the talk and people go, yeah, but Ford and Doonan group, but you go, actually hold on guys. We had a lot of money at the beginning and we didn't take it out and you had mortgages and you didn't take the money out to pay yeah. your mortgages off, did you? You no. said no, because you That's knew it right. was coming. Yeah. Back in those days, yeah, my mum was a bookkeeper, so she was very prudent <laughs> um, back when we were a micro business. But yeah, and she was very like putting our money in term deposits and that sort of thing, mm. so we couldn't get it. So it was like a forced saving in a way, bless her soul. Um, but you're right, and that led to us being able to grow without debt. And being able to grow without debt is a major thing to have that burden of the bank not writing you all the time and losing that profitability to interest, of course. It, that, that must be a challenge. I mean, you've been and done it, so it's really good that you can say because I can't argue with you for <laughs> one. But you must get a few people saying, yeah, but if I just pay my mortgage off, Andrew, I'll, I'll have a bit more cash yeah. Well, but you go. Look, yeah, you talk to you know, the, the other line of thinking, and it's, it's good advice, is the first debt to pay down is your personal debt, which isn't tax deductible. And if you have any debt, it should be in the business where it is tax deductible. And that is very true, and it's a great way to think of things. But also, it can put a lot of financial pressure on the business mm -hmm. when you're already stretched out, and maybe go to the bank and extend your, your overdraft in order to fund this growth and it doesn't go quite as well or as quickly as planned, suddenly you've got a lot of additional pressures where if you, you left the money in there, yes, the mortgage <laughs> might still be there, but hopefully the money you're gonna make by the growth will outweigh that small. Um, you must have some really interesting conversations around that one with people and not just finance in place, but other things, as you said, you know, people think, oh, I'll just do a little bit more marketing and, and I'll, I'll get more customers. Yeah. But you're obviously going, what are you going to do with them? That's right, that's right. Because the other thing is your people, like every growth, most businesses need more people. 
yeah. um, when they grow. So are those people in place already or are they going to be easy to get? And of course, not all labour is very easy to source at the moment. No. Um, so growth is great, but if you've got no people to undertake the work, then really it's, it's pointless as well. You're not going to be able to maximise that or uh, in any way. And what systems has the business got? Is it very immature business with paper and everyone's passing post-it notes around? <laughs> or is it quite advanced with CRMs and ERP systems? And I'm not saying you need that to grow, but you have to think about the volume of businesses coming in versus what it is now and how are we going to manage that effectively and remember to invoice clients and, and the fundamental things that you think are obvious that, um, you, that people forget because someone else is meant yeah. to be doing that. Oh, I didn't check that. Didn't have the system in place for the check. Yeah, I've, I've come across a lot of businesses, you know, and our basic thing is, you know, check the, the debtors, creditors and cash in the bank. And all of a sudden you're going, well, why is this money not being collected? Yeah. I mean, oh, well, we sent them an invoice. Yeah, exactly, no <laughs> one's chasing it up. And the classic thing that we'd all be familiar with too is paper profits. And like, oh. you know, you go to your accountant at the end of the year and, oh, we made X amount of dollars profit. And you go, where is the money? It's not in the bank account. I haven't taken it out as dividends or yes. salaries. So where is the money? And of course, it's tied up in all uh, the business mm. of debtors, creditors, all that sort of thing and timing of cash flow. Um, mm. And that can be a real, real burden if, you, if you're banking your business decision on a, on a paper profit that really doesn't exist. Talking about paper profits that don't exist, I have a phrase called spreadsheet millionaire. And, <laughs> and I've seen a lot of people put spreadsheets in front of me and show me, this is what will happen. Well, it's not yeah. will happen. This is what my, Do you find that sometimes businesses over project or they project these lovely figures that all yeah. look good on paper. Yeah, and I've done it myself with many of my little business <laughs> ventures that I've, I've modelled out to scale up yeah. and they all look great on paper, don't they? And I normally try to do scenarios, I do sort of like the ideal scenario that we're referring to there, Michael, yeah. and then mm, maybe a realistic, and what happens if it doesn't go well at all, what's the ramifications and of that? For example, when I bought the gym, I ran exact same scenarios and the best scenario hasn't yet <laughs> come to fruition, <laughs> I hasten to add, the, the realistic one has. But I also said, okay, if I lost 30% of my members in the gym, how would that affect the business and the P&L? And then I back calculated it to the break even point of number of members, I'd need to be paying all the bills. So you need to right. think all the scenarios, good, bad and um, likely. So when you're with people, you're one of these people that is saying, okay, when we strategize, they have to understand the risk that's associated with it. So you do a, you're not yeah. a negative person anyway. No but way. You're just yep. more realistic. You're yeah. saying if you're prepared, and then you can make a decision, are you willing to accept that result? That's right, and the risk you mentioned a moment ago is so true, is what are we actually risking? Are we risking just that extra 50 or $100,000 that we've earmarked to be spent on the growth? Mm. Or are we risking the whole business if, you know, if it doesn't succeed, it's, it's win or all or nothing sort of scenario. And then what does the effect does that have? Does that mean you lose the family home? So some risks you have to really weigh up very carefully. And if the risk is too great, everyone's got a different risk appetite. But personally, I wouldn't be risking my house or my whole yeah. business on a growth strategy. Wow, what a great interview that was with Andrew Ford. Part two is next week, so make sure that if you're on Facebook, make sure you like us so you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe and share, guys, and same on Instagram. They know all the drills, don't they? But, but I think it's important to share the information as well. Yep. We give the information for free so you can build your business. So if you think one of your friends or business and use the information, just share it to, 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 to other people. Yeah, and look, if you know someone, or maybe it's yourself, uh, that'd like to come on the show and share your wisdom and your learning as well, hey, just drop us that email at info at worthingtonstoop.com, uh, the producers of this show. We would be delighted to hear from you. What a show it was. Jeez. I know that a lot of you got a lot of information, gold nuggets, but what is the secret now? Take action Take and action. do something with that information. Look, we'd like to thank our very special guest, Mr. Peter uh, McLernan. We had uh, Ivor Cleary on, we had Helia Singh, think Peter Hopkins with the golf uh, tip. I thought that was great. Um, we had Franco Priel and, of course, Andrew Peter Ford. Look, all the guys' contact details are below if you want to uh, have a check them out in their businesses. And so is all our links for our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We'd love to have you followers and likers and supporters so we can keep producing this show for you. And I think that about wraps it up for this week's show. Yep. Looking forward to next week. <laughs>